Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th Insight in the Baselight Beginner video series. Uh, today we're going to have a look at tracking shapes within Baselight. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the area tracker and we're going to use that to track a shape within our scene. We're also going to be looking at some basic keyframing techniques so that you don't necessarily need to create a tracker. You can just sort of move the shape a little bit yourself, keyframe it and achieve the result that you're after. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a shape with a keyboard shortcut key S. If you're unfamiliar with how to create shapes, I definitely recommend you go check out the previous insight where we cover the basics. Using the shape bounding box and the shape handles here, I'm just going to roughly position this around our actress's face. I'm going to jump down to our grade layer, jump to our video grade, and let's just raise the gain a lot. To make it a little bit clearer what we're doing, I'm gonna to jump to my shape and really reduce that feather. So we've got a very targeted adjustment and I'm also just gonna whack some gain so we can really see what we're tracking here. Okay, I don't think that we'll be able to miss this shape. This is a very clearly defined shape. So now that we've got our very interesting grade adjustment on our actress's face, we wanna track this throughout the shot. So I mentioned at the beginning that the most rudimentary way to do this is to add keyframes to our shape. So if we go ahead and click our shape strip and let's close these other matte operators and just give us a little bit more working room here. So if we scroll down in the parameters view with our shape selected, you can see we have a tracking sub panel, but we're gonna ignore this for now and jump down to our keyframe sub panel. So the first thing to get out of the way is we can actually dynamically scrub through this keyframe bar and it'll move our cursor throughout the shot. We wanna make sure that the cursor is lined up to the frame of action where our shape lines up with her face. So let's just leave it at the beginning here. If we have a look at the feathering sub panel within the parameters view, you can see that we've got a couple of key frameable parameters here. We've got the feather of the shape, the opacity of the shape, and most importantly, we've got our shape motion keyframe here. So we've got a set keyframe button and we've got a keyframe mode button. If we go ahead and click the set keyframe button, you can see that a few things happen. The first thing that happens is all of our keyframeable parameters activate. And you can see that in the keyframe bar down below, you can see there's a little notch that's been created. That shows an active keyframe. If I drag my cursor back onto the notch, you'll see it'll glow to let us know that the cursor is resting on an active keyframe. You'll notice when we created our keyframe for our shape, it automatically toggled on both the feather and the opacity keyframes. If we want to just toggle the shape motion, and leave the feather and the opacity keyframing alone. We can command Z that. We can go down to the keyframe sub panel and we can turn off stripe keyframes. Turning this off will mean that when we create a keyframe, it won't automatically toggle on all of the available keyframeable parameters. So now if we click the set keyframe button, you can see that it just applies to shape motion and the other two parameters aren't active. Because we're just keyframing motion on this, uh, I'm going to leave it as it is. The other thing you'll notice is that the keyframe mode button defaulted to an S curve. This might be okay, but for me personally, I like all of my keyframes to have a linear motion path, so I'm going to select linear here. Now, let's get on to tracking our shot. So let's drag our cursor to the end of our shot, and all we need to do is start adjusting the motion of our shape. So I'm going to adjust the rotation, and position of the shape here. And you can see that a keyframe has automatically been added to the keyframe bar. If we click and drag into the middle of the shot, you can see that I may need to readjust this. And I can keep on making incremental adjustments. Every time I move the shape, it creates a new keyframe. And you can see now if I scroll through here, we are getting a rough track of our actress's face. Before we move on to the area tracker, let's have a small look at some basic keyframing hotkeys. We can jump between keyframes using the square bracket keys. So left square bracket will jump us through our keyframes. Right bracket will jump us through our keyframes too. If we want to shift a keyframe, we can hit command right bracket and command left bracket to shift our keyframes throughout our shot. At any time, we can right click on a keyframe and we have some more options. If we add a keyframe to the move selection, 
We can select more than one keyframe and shift these throughout our scene using command left and right square bracket. To deselect these keyframes, we can go and right click, deselect all, and you can see we can also delete keyframes to the left and right of our current cursor. If we wanna clear the keyframes we've made, I'm gonna go up to our shape motion keyframe mode, click and set back to constant, which by nature will eliminate all of the keyframes. Okay, so let's take a little look now at the area tracker. Let's go ahead and park our cursor at the end frame of the shot and just make sure that this is looking good here. Looking at our tracking sub panel in the parameters view, we're gonna ignore the gray area and jump straight down to our new tracker options. You can see here we have the option to create an area tracker, an area perspective tracker, and we've got some other point tracker options here as well. For basic shape tracking around base light, you're gonna default to the area tracker quite a lot of the time, but the one and two point trackers are also really useful tools, which we can explore in other insights. With my cursor lined up at the end frame of this shot, I'm gonna hit the new area tracker button, and you can see that we've created another strip in the timeline, and our shape has been replaced with a tracking bounding box. This pink area tracker shows you what base light's going to use to track your shape. And as you can see, by default, it creates a bounding box pretty much around your shape. But you can actually go ahead and customize this, change this, um, point it at areas of the frame that you want it to track. For now, we want our area tracker to track our face. So we're gonna make sure to line it up with our actress's face. Jumping over to the parameters view here, you can see that we have our area track name up here and we can select multiple tracks from this list. We only have one, so we're gonna leave that on track zero. And let's have a look at our three main options that we have to play with. Starting from the top, you can see that we have a track forward button, a track backwards button, and we have two buttons here that will track backwards and forwards depending on what this frame number is set to. So for example, if I change this to 20, I can track backwards from my current cursor 20 frames. So I'm gonna click this here and see what happens. You can see after 20 frames, the tracking automatically stops. If I change this to five, hit enter, you'll see that it'll only track backwards five frames at a time. So this can be useful in certain circumstances. For now though, I've already tracked this far back into my shot. So I'm going to continue the track by hitting track backwards. Okay, and that did a pretty good job. Let's drag the cursor back and forth and see, look at that. So already you can see how much faster that was than keyframing. It's captured all the rotation, Y and X axis data, even with a hand going right through the middle of the track there. So I would class this a very good result. So that's very well and good, but what happens if we wanted to customize our track a little bit more? What if we wanted the track to include the X and Y axis data but for the shape not to track the rotation data. Luckily, there are options for that, but they're not found up here. They're found in the shape strip. To really easily swap between your tracker and your shape, there's a return to shape button, which you're gonna click, and that automatically selects our shape layer. Making sure that we're scrolled down in our tracking sub panel, you can see that this gray area has now sprung to life. So we have our tracker name, Again, we can select our trackers from this drop-down menu here. We can unlink this shape from the track. So if I go ahead and unlink this here and scroll through our shape, you can see the shape is no longer tracking, but if I click the tracker, you can see the tracking data is still active. The shape is just no longer linked to our track. If I go back to the shape, hover down in our tracker menu and select the area track, you'll see that it links once again. Moving along in the tracking sub panel, you can see there's also a delete button where you can delete the tracker and you can go to the tracker which selects your tracker strip within your scene. I'm going to click the return to shape button to toggle back to my shape layer. Underneath the tracker name, you can see all of the various parameters that we can toggle on and off for our shape tracking. I'm going to scroll back to here before the rotation starts and I'm gonna to toggle off the rotation tracking. Now you can see as I scroll, there's zero rotation. That shape is set in its ways. If I go ahead and enable rotation, you can see 
there's our rotation enabled again. Again, turning it off, no rotation. So from here in the tracking sub panel, you can really easily customize what parameters your shape is using for the track. To finish off, let's go to our grading layer. Let's take out some of this blue, take down some of this gain, jump to our shape, introduce some feather, Okay, and that image is looking a lot better than it was. So guys, that was an introduction to shape tracking within Baselight. Again, touching on some keyframing essentials and the area tracker. Maybe in future insights, we can cover uh, the one and the two point trackers and delve into a little bit of uh, that functionality. Um, for mixinglight.com, I'm Luke Ross. <laughs>